Hello and welcome back to It's Not Just Black and White, where the topics that we discuss are most likely going to be controversial. So if you're easily offended, or even very difficultly offended, this may not be the place for you. As always, my name is Ali Lake and I'm sitting here with Jordan Brown and Corey Bearclaw. And today we're going to be discussing some heavy topics. We'll be talking about race, nationalism, and cancel culture. So Jordan Brown, let me ask you, um, in today's America, do you think that race like actively plays a role in how you interact with others and how others interact with you? Most definitely. I have to say, you know, um, as an African-American male, uh, I think race is a bigger factor now than it has been in my whole life, you know, since I can remember. What do you think, Corey? Uh, honestly, I think that race does play a huge factor today in terms of every interaction people have. People are on toes, are, are on their toes all the time when they're interacting, especially when different races. You know, you don't know what, what you can and cannot say. And I think that is a major problem because everybody's uncomfortable. Everybody's uh, kind of thinking too much about what they're saying and can't just relax and just have a good time. People aren't, you know, having all these different uh, different race friends because they don't they may not feel comfortable because they don't feel like they can speak how they normally speak. And at in the same point though, it may not that may be a bad thing because mm-hmm. people don't want to be friends with a different race because they may want to say racist jokes to their friends that they wouldn't necessarily say beforehand yep. if yep. Uh, if they had friends of different races in their background. And I think that's a major, major fact that happened with me when I was, you know, younger. Like I only, like I grew up with white friends, and I pretty much only had white friends. And I mean, when I got to, I mean, when I was in elementary school, I had black friends, Mexican friends, and Indian friends. I had all different friends. But then, like towards middle school and high school, it was pretty much like white friends. I had a couple black friends, and that was it. But until I met you guys, it, it was pretty much just one race, and that's it. Yeah, that was it. But how about you, Ollie? What are you thinking? Um, yeah, so to answer the first question, if I, I don't even think I have an answer for that. So whether race plays a role, I think, yeah, I think race is a, a topic that usually comes with certain agendas for people. And the reason why we're talking about it a lot today, because we just went through a campaign cycle, we just saw an election, all that. So because it's like this topic, yes, we hear about it. But do I think that it negatively affects how I interact with others. I would say those that are maybe don't understand or don't know where I come from or who I am, then yeah, they might, you know, think of me and think, you know, Muslim or whoever, and they might feel a certain way. But I think that in terms of conversations, right? I, I was just in Shasta a few a few months ago. My, uh, the guy who owned the hotel, I was talking to him, he was, uh, he was a white guy and, and a Trump supporter, but I was talking to him one on one as an American and there was no difference. And at the end, we connected more than we disconnected, you know. Yeah. So let me ask you this, Ali, when you when you first met that guy that was you said he was wearing, a, he was just a Trump supporter. Was there anything identifying of him being a Trump supporter? Was he wearing like a Trump shirt or a Trump hat? Anything like that, or did you just find out later that he's a Trump supporter? No, he actually looked like a Joe Biden supporter. You know, he, yeah. like, <laughs> you you couldn't tell. But what I'm trying to say here is that. I just spoke to him and I didn't care about his political beliefs. What we truly bonded on was our love for this country because that was that's really what, what it comes down to. That's yeah. why we came here. Yeah. That's why we even are here sitting and speaking about it because yeah. we care, right? Yeah, well, you know, to kind of like piggyback off of that, I think uh, it's kind of a shame how it feels like each you know, like political party is trying to uh, almost like claim the American flag, right? So if you look at you know, like the Republican party, they're like, oh, America, you know, they have the flag, this and that. Yeah, I love and how that, you put it's, that. It's, it's like it's theirs or something when it's all of us and we all love the country. And uh, we probably like it, have a lot more you know, similarities when it comes to it. Than, yeah, like I said, like me and that guy, in the mainstream media, we're supposed to be polar opposites, yeah. but I, that guy was my best friend, basically, yeah. you know? Yeah, and, and you know, like I gotta say, I every time I, I walk up on somebody new or whatever, um, you know, I kind of engage in a like, conversation as more of like a feeling you out you know, type of thing, because uh, just trying to gauge mm-hmm. as to where they're at, uh, 
almost like politically and um, ideologically. So does that feel, so like, do you ever feel when you first meet someone, what, you know, of a, of a different race, like do you mm. ever feel an uncomfortableness but, um, towards them or, or from them, like they may feel uncomfortable, like, you know, just speaking to you, not, you know, not uh, for any particular reason, but do you feel an uncomfortability or no? Um, I would say no, it's not uncomfortable. It's just that everybody, each person is uh, not sure what the other person is thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I go into, I don't know, so I, I go into the conversation trying to look to see, okay, like, are they like judging me because of my skin color? Are they speaking to me op openly? Are they, uh, um, you know, almost like sizing me up, you know, I'm just gauging their like intentions. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, cause I've, you know, like, don't get me wrong. I've met some like people where I can just tell that like, you know, they don't fuck with me. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's just. And, what, and what's that feeling? What, like what, when you said, oh, you feel like they don't fuck with you. Like what, what do you think that, you know, could you describe that feeling? Cause I feel like I've had that same feeling too. I don't know too. if I can describe it. You know, honestly, Corey, I don't know if I can describe it. I think it's, it's just energy. Yeah, right? yeah. So yeah. I usually think um, it's Republicans or Trump supporters who try to be more cautious about what they say and what they believe in. Yeah. Right. Because sure. they think because of the way I look that I'm going to automatically assume that they're this or they're that. Yeah. Right. And most of the time they're you know, beautiful people, right? Very but to bring this back to the question that you posed, because I, I think it's quite an interesting question. When you are... When you go up to somebody, you're meeting somebody new, right? Are you actually yeah. bringing all of this influence, political, otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. are you bringing this influence back into that conversation? So I think I have a great point on that, and I, I have a question for you as well, Corey, is... Um, so again, this is the same thing now. You've, you guys have seen me in action when I'm meeting people, talking to people, yeah. right? I talk yeah. to every single person, right? Doorman, everyone, right? Yeah. yeah. So the reason why I do that is because there was a time where I was an outcast, you know, in this country when I first came here. And it was like, there's certain conversations that I'd be out of, or people would speak to me a certain way or think about me in a certain way. And they didn't even know me, you know? Yeah. So I want, I never want to have that same bias because if I have that same bias going into view, then it's okay. Like, like makes me a hypocrite because I didn't like it when somebody did it to me. That's true. Yeah. And it, maybe it makes me feel good to do it to somebody else, but it's not right at the end of the day. So I, yeah. I would have, but my question to you, Corey, so, you know, we, I mean, I'm, I'm an immigrant, okay, Jordan Brown is a person of color, for instance, right? So, but you may have a different story. So, I wanted you to, uh, you know, touch on a point maybe because of, uh, you know, your perspective would have been different. I just wanted you to touch on, you know, like, was there at some points where maybe you thought you crossed a line with someone or maybe you didn't understand, like, a, a person's culture? How did you go about, like, learning about that? Yeah, definitely. And I think... How, like, where do I begin? And in reality, I didn't know anything about any other culture besides being white. It, I, did, I was just blind to all of it. I didn't know what it was like to be Muslim, didn't know what it was like to be a black man, mainly because I surround myself with only one culture, one race, and that's pretty much it. And only when, you know, I started expanding my horizons just to different, you know, cultures and races, it wasn't based mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm, I'm going to become friends with you because of your race. It was just because of... I became friends with individual people. Because a just person. Because, yeah, yeah, they're a person. <laughs> and obviously, you know, yeah. like, I, that never happened beforehand either. I didn't choose my friends off the races. It was just I who I was that. friends with. Um, I get that. I See, think, before I came to America, I never even met a black person. So. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I would say that the main reason why I didn't have a lot of diff diverse, uh, diverse races in my friend group was because there wasn't a diverse group of people, at least in the in the environment that I was surrounded with, at least in school, you know, there's probably only two, three black kids that I knew that I could even talk to. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, even once I graduated high school, I started working at uh, at Chili's, and you know, there's there's a couple more black people there that I became really close friends with, and I started asking them about their culture and you know why why they like certain things. And yeah, I started really getting a grasp for what like what they're going through. And you know, they, they would tell me things that they suffered through and trials and tribulations and that really got me thinking more in depth of, okay, maybe they, like, they, they have struggled a lot more to live in a different way than I've ever struggled. And then I'd say that I learned a lot 
about one specific culture was, you know, Islam, a Muslim is through, was through you, Ali, because before that, I had the skewed American perspective of 9-11 mm -hmm. that, you know, all Muslims are terrorists. Mm -hmm. But the second that I met you, I always would say, you know, like I would start and say all these these jokes that, you know, would come off and be slightly racist, or maybe they were just blatantly racist. I should accept that. Um, but you would catch me on that stuff, and then you'd tell me not to tell you that stuff. And the reason why you would tell me not to say that is because, um, like, uh, because of specific things, because that didn't, that wasn't tied to you. And so then I got started getting interested. Okay, well, he doesn't like me saying these things, but this is all I know. So, why don't I start learning about who you are? And then that's when it started. I started getting into the mindset of I should learn more about the Muslim culture, the African American culture, and start asking people like, what's it like being you, just be living the life that you live. Yeah. And by doing that, kind of like opened a door to just every single race, just kind of fell into my group group of friends. Mm -hmm. And now you know, like I feel like I have the most diversified friend group yeah. on the planet. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that really answered your question. Oh, definitely. So I wanted to tell you too, you know, the reason why I would even share more things with you, like all my life, basically, okay? I would not met someone from America who asked, okay? And then Corey asked at a time, very early on, there was times where I had to like check him, you know, he would say something. I'm not saying this to disrespect you either. Yeah. And this could be anybody could be saying this, you know? So... But the reason why I even did that, because I had decided very early on, for some reason, I don't know, I said, for, I'm going to know this guy, we're going to know each other. Yeah. And I thought that that would hinder, you know, our relationship if we're doing this, not like this kind of stuff. Yeah. But when you asked, I basically like poured out, nobody had uh, untapped it before, you know, all yeah, yeah, yeah. basically, yeah. I wanted to. And I think like, because you checked, checked me, or even if you check other people, when they make jokes like that, it develops a standard for who can be in your circle. Yeah. And if those people continue to do it, then you don't mess with those people anymore. You you only talk to people who start to change and they're like, I recognize that you recognize that I was changing. Yeah. And because like I was trying to change because I was I was beginning to feel uncomfortable even saying those things because I knew that they mm -hmm. weren't okay. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you, Corey, how did it make you feel when he checked you? Because I think that's the most important mm -hmm. thing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if someone like gets checked and they just feel it as if they're being attacked yeah. and they don't take it constructively, then wouldn't that provoke? Yeah. Like, so let anger? me yeah. let me add on to that because I think what really he has that a lot of fucking regular people don't. Yeah. It, so he realized when I was when I was checking him, it was from like a point of anger or it was from an emotional point. So he could see it causing me pain in a lot of ways. So he asked one question, which led to a hundred, which led to years later today, okay. you know? Yeah. So like, how did it make you feel for him? I would say that when, it, when, when he checked me for the first time, it definitely didn't process as much as it processed the second time. The second time that he checked me and he's like, hey, Corey, don't say sh shit like that. Uh, like, it really hit me differently because it made me realize that saying jokes that are any in any way like racist and especially to a culture that's been um i don't know if i'm using the correct word ostracized or just totally segregated because of events of extremists yeah you just, i think that like it really made me realize that a majority of people aren't like that and they don't want to be labeled like that and be because they're being labeled like that it made me feel terrible about what i was saying in my web like terrible about who I was as a person yeah. and made me want to change. But I realized that like, there's some people who would not no, take that yeah. at all. They would be like, who are you to tell me what I can and can't say? It's a yeah. joke. Why yeah. don't you just be calm? And, and see, that's what I mean as in like the differences that I would see in yeah. somebody, right? I'm not trying to check them. It's not getting over. It's just a casual conversation. Yeah. But I mean, you don't, you know, like judge a book by its cover, but I mean, at least in my opinion, I can like read a couple pages and then get a gist yeah, of definitely. what's happening, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I can like sense that for sure. Just which type of person would do that uh, based on their like conversation and the type of pointed questions that I ask. Yeah, absolutely. So again, I think that the fact that Corey even didn't react like that, re react in a different manner, 
I think that speaks volumes not only about his character, but literally the volumes or the extent like human beings can go to to f- friggin' understand one another, you know? Yeah. yeah, and I think honestly that if if people took the approach, uh, like I'm not gonna boast myself, but like I really think that it's a good took, example. You're yeah, a very if good example. People took the approach that I took with you, know, you and I, that. It would totally change, at least, especially in America's perspective yep. on differences in races, because yep. people in the beginning were saying, "Oh, you gotta be colorblind. Everyone's the same." When everyone's not the same, no. people yeah. come from all different walks of life. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're even the same race; you could come from a completely different life through social economic status. Yeah, yep. and yep. I think that if you just ask questions of somebody else and get to know who they are, you can become friends with anybody in the world. Yeah. And you can start to relate to them on one way or another. Yeah. Yeah, but even That's if you don't become friends with them, because you don't have to, like, but as long as you're talking to each other, you sit down, like how we sit down and how we speak to each other and try to understand each other, right? Yeah. Just these conversations, as they, like, grow exponentially, I think a a better world will yeah. come about from that to yeah. be like not so melodramatic. Yeah, yeah. But I think, you know, this is a good point. This is a good place to maybe touch on because we're speaking about how in a, in a lot of ways we're speaking about how passionate a certain individual can be about where they come from or who they are, right? If they identify it with like where they come from. So we were talking about nationalism, correct, Jordan Brown? Yeah. Um, you want to touch on that? What's What's good? Help us understand. I mean, you know, so um, nationalism, right, like the pure definition, right, mm-hmm. is just uh, the identification of, of, you know, one's own uh, um, nation and so the support you know, for its interests. Mm-hmm. Um, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's a political movement, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like we're seeing it all around the world and I think it, it, it has its, its bonuses, but also... Uh, quite a few um, um, negatives, right? And we're seeing a huge rise in the nationalism here in America. And I think it's really put um, a different taste in everybody's mouth. When you're saying um, when you're saying that you're seeing a huge rise in nationalism in today's culture, what do you mean by there's a huge rise in nationalism? Um, here, we're seeing a nationalist mentality, right? Uh, as in America first, uh, you know, don't worry about anybody else, mm-hmm. or you know, uh, yeah. we're trying to start trade wars and you know, just be more that uh, edgy, right? You know, with you know, if we look back, um, in, in, in history, uh, you know, like nationalism can be a very scary thing, right? It can yeah. cause a lot of problems, mm-hmm. and, you know, and uh, we look at you know, like other like countries, uh, that have these nationalist movements, yeah, it actually tends to restrict their all their life freedoms right it becomes more like government controlled because it's about people working for their nation right it's all about their nation and whatever the government wants to do they're going to do that because it's but don't you want to rise in your own nation you want to support your nation it's a form of self-identity right like because yeah. it's people it's not like a country it's a land is like the, it's their alive thing the people is what make the country and they have to identify with that piece of land and that's why they you know so I'll, I'll give you an example like pakistan right so the reason why it's not a surprise to me to see this level or any form of nationalism in the mainstream today it's because pakistan is quite like it's it's really cares about itself like they're really proud people they're even so, you know, I always give the example, they they literally hate people that were once them. That's how much they're nationalistic, you know? Yeah. They were all once the same people and they're like, no, this country, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's a very yeah. serious thing. That yeah. means like, you know, petty wars, yeah. battles, like yeah. nonsense politics. Yes. Now they're, so they're both nuclear powers. So, oh, we'll nuke you, this, that, like it's too much. Yeah, you know? well, if we look back in like, history, right? Uh, the Nazi party was a nationalist party, right? Yeah. They wanted to, yep. it was about the Aryan, you know, like nation, right? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's, that's to the extreme yeah. Of, yeah. of what it is, no, but definitely. it is a form of fascism. Yes, but I'm wondering, like, how are we becoming a nationalist? You're, you, you said that America is becoming nationalist, but 
I feel I, I, like I don't really know where, like how we're becoming that so, because we contribute so much, so many funds to different countries. We 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 have donations uh, for different uh, food drives. For yeah, different but countries. that's like or, that's different because it's for the, you don't. Nobody does anything if it doesn't also benefit their own interests. Yeah. Of course, and but these, what, but, these were established. But that's, but that's like what's wrong with that? Um. Yeah. Yeah. No. It, you're right. Okay. But the thing is like. Around outside of this country, like people are are more about you know the community as a whole. Like in a lot of more places, you know? until it hits their border, they're not in a community. Like it, you yeah, don't... no, they are because they literally care about the whole thing surviving versus just one individual. We're here, we're about self identity and you know be yourself, be an individual, make money for yourself, things like this. So what I, what I'm trying to say is like. How I see, I'll, I'll tell you how I see this national, or at least how I'd like to present the nationalism case. Um, and you can tell me if it makes sense or not. So, like the difference currently between Pakistan and US, right? So nationalism eventually leads to basically one political party or power ruling. Exactly. In Pakistan's case, it was military coups. So who's really running the shit is um, like generals. The military's generals are really like who's in charge. Now... That means if they want to police state, if they want to shut down riots, if they want to hose people down for, you know, peaceful protests, things like this. These things you would do in Pakistan, it's like a normal thing. Nobody would bat an eye. They would set, certainly CNN's not fucking talking about it, right? Yeah. Um, but here, you know, anything like that happens. Not only is it mediatized, but you, nobody does a goddamn thing because everybody's like, no, I'm, I wasn't there. My people didn't die. It's not my fight. You know, yeah. you'll find whatever justification you have to literally isolate yourself. Technically, let's like self segregation. Yeah. And you're like, no, uh, these are the reasons why I'm not part of this group because I don't agree with them for whatever reason. So you're, so you're saying that people in America are doing that. What? Yeah, I I describe yeah. facts right now. Yeah, they're yeah. Host, they're yeah, yeah. shutting down protests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. But but the point of like loving the land. Okay, so what I wrote down here is I just like to read it off. So, Pakistan's nationalism is so misguided that they hate a country from which they were forged. Okay, the U.S.'s nationalism is so misguided that they love the land for which their ancestors killed millions of people for, right? Yeah. Our podcast, it's called, you know, when we're talking about different things, sometimes it's not just black and white. But in this case, genocide is still genocide, all right? Well, man. And that's why I think the case for nationalism is a so I think disruptive. So, so, okay, so you're like correct about the historical thing, but uh, <laughs> I think he, I, I would have to like disagree with uh, the view as to yeah. why our, this, this our nationalism is, is so like misguided. And I think it's misguided because it's literally like making us hate each other. Yeah, and that's that's, yeah. that's why point. our nationalism is misguided. And, yeah, and it's because it's been you know, like, politicized and um, essentially, you know, um, I'll say his name, you know, that's you know, a you great know, point. You know, like this last administration ran on nationalism. Yeah. You got to think about the rhetoric that was coming out. Mm, yeah, this absolutely. was rallying people. Uh, who felt like they weren't being heard yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Right. And I'm not going to say on this that, anger and hate yeah, for everybody else. I know? think that, mm -hmm. uh, in, no, in no way do I think that this is right, but the quote is like, you know, you build your base off common enemy. Um, you know, like it, even though it may not be okay, but like what our last administration did was create a common enemy from within and drive up his his following because he created a common enemy yeah. that's right next door like our neighbor yeah it's called yeah. control up controlled yeah. opposition yes yes, yes. yes. but yes. with the, and that and like i'm, I'm in agreement with you by the way i'm just yeah. saying that like um i think that what has happened because of that is is created such extremes on the others on each and uh, on both sides that there can no longer be centrists there can no longer be people that are moderates either you know moderate left moderate rights because everything is it's either you're polarized. not it's, it's because yeah. if you believe even a little bit of the other side's story mm. then you are not longer with us and so we're pushing you away yeah. and so these people who are moderates and want things to be done on both sides not they're not getting their voices heard and they are the majority of the people yeah. they are the people that probably aren't even voting because they're like yo like i would vote but it's not going to change anything because they know that like they're 
even they they would vote both ways if they could. Yeah, no, I think the last president that got like like uh, more votes like like of the whole country, I think it's like Harding or some shit. It's like a long time ago. I don't know. Well, there was the. I mean, each candidate got the most votes ever this past election. Yeah, and I mean, guys? yeah, and I feel like it's for two reasons. One is COVID, right? I mean, like nobody had shit else to do than vote. And then there's like also uh, how um, this felt very high stakes. I really felt like this election was for the soul of America, right? Uh, it really felt that way, straight up. Yeah, I, I get mean, that. I'm a like conservative, you know, a conservative you know, Democrat. Yeah. To be honest, like I yeah. probably would be Republican, but the reason I'm not is because of what I felt like this last administration stood for, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I don't feel like when I look at uh, Trump and his cabinet and everybody who he surrounded himself with, that that doesn't look like America. That doesn't look like some people who were looking out for me. They don't look like me. Um, the things that were, I, I don't feel like I would and be- And when you say they don't look like you, do you mean race? Or race do you mean wise, behavior yeah. wise? I mean race. Because don't get me wrong, wrong I think people like put the, the, the president's name on their trucks and flying American flags with their or and president's flags around was a bit extreme. Yeah, no, people aren't going to be is, doing that with Biden. This is can fascism, can Corey. This is you. nationalism. You see, that's what I meant earlier. He's, they claimed the, the American flag. Yeah, they claimed the Trump flag. Mm -hmm. This is the Trump flag. Is like imagine They're like being redneck a Nazi conquistadors. Flag. Yes, <laughs> it's like uh, it's not funny, but I, I understand. Yeah, yeah. and you know, there's, there's I don't feel in that I don't. Yeah. Feel if I were to talk to that person, I feel like they wouldn't like me, right? Yeah, or I don't feel like welcome. In but their do you think America. that there is Trump supporters or just like America, like that were moderates? But and, and they could but even let be. Me, black. Let me say one like, thing: that there was black Trump supporters. Yeah, that definitely. weren't like in power or looking for power and influence. They're just regular guys like you and me yeah. who, who are black Trump supporters that saw something maybe the other side did. So there was I Latinos tried, for Trump, everybody. Yeah, 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 I tried Trump. to support Trump. I liked a lot of things that he said. And some of the things that he did were good. So was there anything lie. in a racial way of the, why you didn't like Trump besides that a majority? Of I just saw the direction. Yeah, you know, I just saw the direction of you know, like of the country. You guys know, I studied policy. Yeah, right. I, the direction that he was taking the country was um, not a good one. Yeah, and you know, and I think the damage that was done in this like four years, both you know, like domestically and internationally to America's like reputation, we might not ever get back. You but know. like that was evident like in his first seven days he's bombing the yeah. shit out of Syria like relax buddy hey, yeah. hey, no like, the guy was about him. the power you know if yeah. you think back to you know he used Syria like but a war like, you know you know what he was solving a war that the last administration before him couldn't solve for eight years and he solved it in seven days it's because I, the I, last administration uh, it got me was uh <laughs> it's because like because previously, they were dancing like, for the people that but but we're dancing for the on the flowers of the people with without any of the harsh realities. Yeah, but you see, regardless of this, okay, let's just you can correct me if I'm wrong. Also, okay, what I also learned is that the plantation owners in this country were also the Southern Democrats that at this one point then became Republicans and then built the foundation of our current Republican Party. Okay, so. Uh, like Republican or not, and I'm just saying just a fact. I I don't even like I don't know what it's not that I don't care what the ancestors did. It's fucked up. I've been saying like what their ancestors did. It technically didn't do anything to me. Okay, mm -hmm. May, only the British ancestors. You know, I, I was affected by. Sure, but again, it's not the same because my people were never necessarily or technically enslaved. Yeah. Right, indentured servitude, as, as bad as it may be, like it's still. It, you can find a way out somehow, even though it's difficult. I don't want to get on these boundaries. Yeah. But I do think because of that fact, right, regardless, irrespective of political party, irrespective of race, I think what we should take into account, and I think it's a good point to, time to bring it up, is um, immigration, where we stand on it, what maybe our thoughts are about it. You know, I think we all may have some sort of different... We've not... I don't think we've necessarily talked about it before. Uh, I mean... I'm not gonna lie, uh, like before Trump, obviously, uh, I 
was pretty anti-immigration. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. I used to think these types of things. Oh, like before people, Trump? Before Trump. Why do you say before Trump? Why does that matter? Well, because uh, now it's like a, now it's like a, it's like a thing. But I'm so saying, like did you change your stance on immigration because you don't like Trump? As I've got older, right, and I've seen you know, like documentaries and this and that, and uh, there's one that really, um, you know, stuck out to me. Which one? Uh, I'm trying to remember the name, mm-hmm. but it was on like Netflix. Uh, but I, it was the one about his corruption and the, the business no, 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 dealings. No, 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 no. It was about the border, right? Okay. And it was about. Uh, so it showed. It, they rode around with, mm-hmm. like the like border patrol, yeah. but then they also went in like Mexico and like met all these like people who were trying to come to the U.S. and it showed like the two different why we're keeping them out and why they want to come. Yeah, and then it was like, uh, and then you're seeing how they're getting over, uh, how the majority of them actually. So don't let the media fool you. <laughs> majority of people who come over, they die. You know, who try to make that trip, they like they're dead. Like, Especially most there's like a lot more militia I'm too, right? You, yeah. the, like, just the, no, people. like they will die in the desert. You know how treacherous it is. Right. That that that's the Mojave right. Desert, which yeah. desert is. Dude, I don't know what the desert's called, but that wall, majority <laughs> of that wall was literally like useless because it is so hard to get across. And many people lose their lives because there's and, nothing out there. Yeah, there's they're nothing good. Out there. walking out. Yeah, it's like random. And then if they're getting, animals. yeah, and if they're getting, you know, like led by uh, what do they call them, like coyotes? Coyotes. Or uh, they, um, dude, like you're walking for a long time, you start to like fall behind because they're moving the whole time because it's getting harder and harder for them to get over. So they're like everything's like gotta be like this that. Yeah. You start to fall behind or whatever. Or, you don't get up from the break, you know, like soon enough, like they leave you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're you definitely go. dead. And then it's, it's, uh, and then what I saw was what really made the documentary, you know, like really powerful was, uh, they did an experiment of like what it looks like to die in the desert. And, um, what they did was they put like a pig in a carcass, they dressed it up like a human and they put some cameras around and they just like left it there. Right, and then it showed how fast that that like body will disappear. Yeah. Right, and it literally disappears and scatters over miles, mm-hmm. like bones, everything. Yeah. Right, and all what? these people, yeah, and all these people who die, dude, they'll they'll never know who they are, how many. They'll never be found. They'll never be found. Wait, so what's eating them? Dude, what are you talking about? Dude, just it's decay. It, dude, it will, it, no, it's not even decay, dude. It's wind? wildlife. It's yeah. wind, wildlife, decaying, everything. Like, dude, Whoa, it like... ends up, it scatters like, <laughs> yeah. for miles. Oh my it's God. insane, bro. Yeah. Imagine how many bodies mind. are there right yes. now. Oh my God. And they only That's studied, so they up. only studied like a 10 to 15 mile radius of where they were like, where it is like, this border is massive. Like, yeah. Hundreds of thousands Fuck, yeah, of dude. bodies are there. That will never. It's, it's insane. So, yeah, it's tragic. Yeah, so to pivot, what yeah, about what about you, Ali? What, what's your thoughts on immigration? You know, your family came here from Pakistan. Yeah. You probably got a different view. Um, I got a few different views. It's funny because I was gonna ask you <laughs> to question. Right? I'll come. I'll come. After. I was gonna ask. You, okay. Um, let me look at the paper. Um, so. Yeah, like, there's a few things. If we're talking about immigration, how I currently think as a United States American citizen, okay? Who, I, I came here legally, okay? I didn't, I didn't enter the country illegally ever. I want never, okay? Um, <laughs> I want to I wanna be very clear. <laughs> but that's the reason why I say that, because obviously, you know, we did it right. And honestly, so I don't agree with anybody good or bad mean natured it's mm-hmm. not my it's not good or bad nature is not on me it's not i'm not, yeah. I'm not here to judge them yep. okay like it's not my place yeah but you know do just do figure it out i'm sorry I mean, dude I'm so you're, wait, so you're saying saying it's not your place to judge them but you came here I as, came, you came here as an as a legal immigrant yeah. 
And what is but your, I don't want to take cross? away. Look, I also don't want to take away because these people, like you know, coming up from Guatemala and all these other places, yeah. the places that are actually really bad and run by the cartel, they it's a horrible, They're horrible just existence. Trying to get a better life. But when we're shutting our borders down, okay, and we're putting them in these camps where children are freaking disappearing from, okay, that's something that you know. What it's is horrible. that? They're trying to escape their reality, and that's happening because of something that we're doing to them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So wall so, or not, that so, that's fucked okay, up. Okay. So I'm gonna so Children. I'm gonna take this from the hardcore, like logic. If A equals B, B equals C perspective. Okay, but was this was this an emotional charge that I had? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, no, I'm asking you. I'm asking no, you I seriously. Thought, so someone, too, yeah. if someone in America, say any one of us three, goes to the store, punches someone in the face, or Steals something, goes to the cash register, steals money. Yeah. Cops get called, they catch us. Yeah. What happens? Are we by ourselves or what? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Us three together? No, no, just one person. If if one person goes to the store, commits a crime, and what and that and then that a cop comes, takes that takes that person away, puts them in jail. Yes. And then that person serves a certain amount of time or serves a punishment according to the law that was broken. Yes. Law that was pa- the law that was passed by the people, yes. correct? So, You're talking about when they've entered the country already? No, no, no. No, just a, ran- no, just a person that's a U.S. citizen comes, goes to a store, breaks a law. They get arrested. I, I, then they have a punishment, right? Yes. So, if someone comes here illegally, illegally being key word here, they broke a law, should they not be punished based off what the law says they should be punished for? Yeah, but you, I would say that there has to be like a reasonable thing. You can't treat that person the same as a murderer. And I, I definitely don't think you should be taking them away from their family. Arrest so, everybody. So then why, so then why are Arrest thie- everybody. But then why are thieves going to jail with murderers? You're, why, they're, they're totally different things. Technically, thieves don't even go to jail, bro. That's not yeah, the no, but it's, it's, I'm that's pretty not sure the it's point. not the same yeah. amount of time. That's what I mean. It's, it's not, not the same, not amount, the same of time. amount of time. But they still get punished. But they yeah. still also get you know treated as animals. And I'm not, I'm not saying that what they're doing at the borders is okay. I'm not saying that locking them up in cages, not giving them food, not giving them a toilet, and sanitary conditions. Which leave. happened, right? I, yeah. We don't have the source, but it happened, yes, guys. Yes, I understand really? that that's not okay. But uh, when I'm talking just from a solely immigration, illegal immigration perspective, if they come here illegally, they should be sent they back to their own country back. because they broke a law. Yes. It's a law that they broke. That's the Yes. And that's it. But they should be sent back immediately. Not they should be, be held in jail or whatever. They should be, they sent, should be back. sent back immediately. So, and so, like, I, I want to backtrack. So I was not saying I'm an advocate or anything for illegal immigration because I'm not. And all of my friends and like people... You know, even you know, like my like girlfriend is is an immigrant, right? Yeah. And they all did it legit, right? Yeah. Everybody, you do it legit. I mean, yeah, you belong here, right? Yeah. But um, you gotta have like empathy uh, for these people. I think that's what's really important. But um, they need to be handled and with with dignity. Yeah. And, uh, and just I like holding it, them in these yeah. Don't places that wrong. were meant for like criminals. Is, yeah. It's just, if you have empathy, I mean, it's just even a little bit, I don't think I have that much empathy, but even yeah. a little bit, the fact that I can actually do something about that, it's almost worse. Yeah. So, um, you know, <coughs> your like perspective, um, as, as an, as an immigrant, do you feel like you identify more as an American or um, as a Pakistani? I'm a European. How about that? <laughs> okay. yeah. But I, I mean, I would say like maybe I'm I'm the wrong person, person for this I because know. like I, I know it caught you off guard. No, I'm because sorry. I know because I mean it did, but yeah. I mean like I, I don't I no longer have my identity attached to you know a nation like I I, I don't have necessarily. Yeah, I love the land. Look around us, Jordan Brown. The land is lush and beautiful, beautiful right? Yes. What's what's to be ungrateful about that? Of course, I, I love this place, you know? I see. But, uh, you know, if other countries like mine, they, um, you know, they force their young into the military. And, you know, that didn't happen with Pakistan, but it just easily as could have. Yeah. But uh, regardless of my point, I'm saying I lost my identity because... I, in America, no matter how many like Americans I became friends with, like you guys, or how many like how much I integrated or changed my act, 
activities, behavior, mentality, lifestyle, lifestyle, shit, exactly. Yeah. Um, so like I was so, but no matter how much how American I got, I was like too American for the Pakistanis, and I was too Pakistani for the Americans. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. so okay. after that, I was just like, okay, I don't want to be either because if either one of them is not accepting me, I'll just be myself, and everybody can you know. Hit, yeah, I get hit the road, I guess. I Kick rocks. It. I don't know. Yeah. What's the nicest way to say that? You know. I got you. We're trying I not mean. to cuss, guys. How about that? <laughs> 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 but I wanted to know, Corey. So, you know, what maybe were like historically growing up? What did you think about immigration or immigrants? Let's say in general, like what what maybe were you taught or influenced, and what was the point where that changed? And you know, what do you think about just? Like yeah. immigration specifically today, and let's talk about Mexico because that's you know what. Like, yeah, let's I mean, it, it doesn't just have to be Mexico; it can be anywhere. And you know, I've had you know my teeter totter beliefs towards immigration. But, Shout out to Diego but, de la Vega, Mexico City. Yeah, but in reality, like my my views of immigration haven't changed because how I, how I said before, I take the perspective of you know if you break a law, you get punished for the law you broke based off you know what the fine writing says you should be pun- how long you should be punished like i said before i don't think what they're doing there is all right but i've always had the same view like it you you're doing something illegal it literally says illegal in, in the name yeah. and so it's just not okay and that's kind of the stance i've always had and it's you know not growing up really makes you know, sense yeah, yeah, like they you know, know they're breaking the law yeah, growing up though like you know it didn't change at all until like I never started teetering towards whether illegal immigration was okay, and like I said, it's not necessarily that it's not okay. Like I, I think that what they're do, why, like why they're coming here, is totally justifiable. I completely empathize em, empathize with them. I think that what they're trying to do is get away from a burning hell that they're living in to try and come to you know the 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 great land or like a, mm-hmm. a, to the dreamland or whatever they want to yeah. call it mm-hmm. and I I understand why they're coming in I have sympathy yeah. for that but that doesn't mean that they aren't breaking the law and shouldn't yeah. be you know sent back or punished for what they've done yeah I get it um, I mean but either way they're getting killed so that's yeah. really yeah like a and, and, and it's yeah, terrible but realistically it's a they're horrible like existing here and it's a hard knock life here yeah. so See, it's not yeah easy. but again this is what I've always said that like People who are leave, like, let's say, refugees, for instance, you know, they have to leave in those same countries. There's also well-off people, right? I, I met people from Mexico and Switzerland. These guys ha- have more money today than I'll ever have, you yeah. know? Like, that's also there, you know? There's a very live, real culture. And yeah. these guys, like, are humble. They're normal. Yeah. They're, re- they're so freaking nice. But yeah. check this out, though. Majority of immigrants here that did it, you know, legally, they are the more well-off ones from wherever. Yeah, they sure, yeah, they sure. Come and from. unless say... they got asylum, and how they get asylum is by coming up the border and saying, "Hey, like I'm running for my country," and then they have to go through the whole process. Yeah, but I would yeah. say like some corporate big bad. shots and like you yeah. know other yeah. Yeah. missionaries yeah. or whoever they got. They're the they got some asylum it. too. The, yeah. the top tier guys, yeah. UN yeah. guys, all these. Yeah. I would say though that one at like, one point in time, when I like. Or not, I would say that there is a time when I fully realized how big of a struggle it is to get across the border from Mexico. I, um, there's this guy that I work mm-hmm. with. Mm-hmm. Uh, he started to, I won't mention names or anything, but he came here illegally uh, when he was really young, got, you know, got in some legal trouble, got sent back. But when he was like 22, 23 years old, he did it again. And he did it the way that we've talked about, like we we're talking about how you, people have died in the desert. He he was told he got a backpack with some water and some food, and he's told that you have to make this food and water last for seven days, but really it was food for probably like three days at most. And you're hiking through the desert during the summer, so it's scorching hot. No no umbrellas because if you have anything that can identify you, the helicopters are going to pick you up. Yeah. yeah. So then he yeah. so then he ran out of food by the seventh day. Had to wait another two days before a car was gonna come pick him up. Car finally comes, picks him up, tell, gives him, you know, a bottle of water and some food. Mm-hmm. He immediately gets put. You know those semi, you know semi trucks. How like the front part? There's like that the top part of the front part of the truck, the, the thing that actually hauls yeah, the, the load. Mm-hmm. There's like this 
there's this space in between the roof of like the outside of it and the roof of the inside. And he had to lay down flat in there and be silent. He couldn't talk. And he had to lay in there silent for eight hours while the car was driving from like San Diego to all the way up to Northern California. And he was in there with someone else in yeah. the, in the summer. So it's boiling hot. Yeah. And he started to, and obviously lose, lose his cool, started freaking out and started banging on the door and said like, hey, I need to get out of here. I can't be in there anymore. And then the, guy, the, the truck driver had no idea that the two guys were up there. Mm -hmm. So Holy then he pull, the truck driver pulls over, gets out his gun, tells He's the guy to step out. out. And now that guy's freaking out. And then once they, once they get out of the truck, they just start sprinting. And they're on Highway 5. They wow. just start sprinting on, on down I the road. Five. And they're like on foot? Yeah, yeah, on foot. Well, they start on sprinting on because they have no idea where they are. We know where, where they are, but like they, they're just like, okay, I'm out on this road. I'm going to start running. Whoa. And they have a cell phone because there's supposedly two guys are following the truck that are going to pick them up. So then they run off. The, car, the, the driver gets in his car and the trucker goes off. And then finally <laughs> he calls a guy. He gets picked. They get picked up. And then they go another three hours. They go to a hotel. And he finally gets to like relax, but he can't leave the hotel for three days. Wow. And that's how he came to America. And that's like, when I heard that story, I was so oh. struck by like, like, damn, this guy's 22 years old. This guy was my age at the time. He's telling mm -hmm. me this story. Wow. Yeah. I could not even think about doing it. Yeah. Doing yeah. any of that, going through the trials and tribulations, all of it yeah. sounds yeah. like torture. Yeah. And yeah. that's when I kind of like realized, okay, you know, these, if they make it here, and they're here, and they're doing their thing. I'm not gonna report them. I'm not gonna be like, hey, this guy's illegal. I mean, you they're paying taxes. Back. You do what so you need to do. let me ask you a question. So, you know, I think this might be a good point too. You know, you once told me a story about an individual that, that you know that may hold certain beliefs. Would you like to share that story tonight? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Is I it mean. a good time to like, you know, bridge the last one into this? Uh, yeah, definitely. And I think, yeah, that story, you know, uh, it's kind of funny because it kind of, it definitely ties into our last topic. Um, because in a way I kind of almost canceled him because he was, you know, someone that I knew for a while and like, he was, he was a great man and everything like that. Or at least I thought so. And you know, like to pivot into our next topic is going to be ca cancel culture. You know, mm -hmm. kind of defined as the popular practice of withdrawing support for public figures and companies that they've done or said something considered objectionable or offensive. Cancel culture is generally discussed as being performed on social media in a form of group shaming. <laughs> okay, so I take it back. I, I, in a form, I did canceling, but I meant that I, almost, I, I essentially just canceled my friendship with him. And it totally changed the perspective I had once had of him. And you know, the simple, the story simply put is like, you know, I became good friends with you, Ollie, obviously a long time ago. And this friend, he's, uh, he's of the Christian faith and mm -hmm. he's white. And, uh, you know, we just gone and talks about religion and stuff like that. And then I ask him, you know, oh, like, or, or I tell him, I think about you. And then in, I tell him, oh, he's, he's a Muslim and he's like, you're, you're friends with a Muslim? And I said, yeah, what do you mean? He's like, well, what? Like, you shouldn't do that. I said, why not? And he's like, because they're the devils. All of them are the sons of the devil. Wow. They're, they're you know, they're, and I like immediately was offended by that story. Like right after he said, I was like, but I wanted to understand him, you know, like, you know, like we used to talk about before, I like to understand people's perspective, where they're coming from. <laughs> so I was like, yo, where, where, where is that perspective coming from? What makes you think that that's okay? Like, yeah. you know, they're normal people. That's like, a normal response. They have their own that's religion. Maybe like, even the correct thing. response. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's the most appropriate response. Yeah, yeah. Well. And so like, you know, we got, we, uh, we dove into it and it's just his own, his own Christian faith just said that, you know, Muslims are the devil and stuff like that. And like, do you know which denomination he, he was? Uh, it's 
Casey Christian. Because it's obviously Catholic. not Baptist. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. no, yeah. Like, you know, I haven't heard this story, but yeah, you know, yeah. Cool. yeah, you know, like we could dive into it, but essentially it just went back and forth between me and me trying to grasp how he still thinks that's a that that belief is okay when, and I realized that he almost had the same belief I used to have before I even grasped the concept that people are just. Nah, like Muslims and anybody who believes in Islam, whatever. There's normal people would you living say, their life. Would you say that you're a mentally, or you live a more mentally healthy lifestyle because you came to this conclusion and how you chose to you know, interact with others from different cultures? Oh yeah, 100%. I think that because I was able to, to be open, open-minded to different cultures, different uh, races, different um, religions, mm -hmm. and just wanting to come from a point of understanding, it totally opened my eyes and and opened opportunities and doors that would would have been shut before. Mm -hmm. You know, like my friend group now is all from different walks of life, and I get, I feel like I have the most interesting friend group of all time. Um, yeah, we have a great time. Yeah, but I mean, like, let me we're ask also you. Also, just regular people. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're all just regular. Yeah, yeah. you know. Let's wait till we're actually so. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let me ask you, Ollie. Do you uh, yeah. like when in time? When in a time has you've been like? Racism or, or like, um, when, is it, when has there been a point that racism has really affected you? Like when someone's attacked you for being your race or your culture, um, and any, and you know, was it in Cal like, was it in California or maybe a different state? Has it ever happened in California or is it in a different state? Yeah, so I have two stories that I wanted to share today. And uh, one of them was in Arizona. I was with Jordan Brown, hello. Mm. Um, and the other one, I, I was in California. I was in Los Gatos, California, okay? Um, okay, you guys pick synagogue story first or Arizona story first? Arizona, bro. Let's go with Arizona. So Arizona story, okay? Um, it wasn't necessarily that one single person singled either of us out. I mean, I didn't know him at that point, so I just expected that he was treated like the same as me. <laughs> okay, that's just how, I, I don't know, that's a, like a immigrant, I guess my people, like, we think like this. But, uh, so we went to this uh, upscale bar, it's in Scottsdale, Arizona. I think maybe it's the second or third place we went, okay? Mm -hmm. It's like around the edge, nice place, nice bar and lounge. And basically, we were new friends in a new city and our goal you know, was to just have fun. We didn't care about any, what anybody else is doing or what anybody else is, really. That was the last thing on our mind, you know? Um, so, like, I noticed there's, like, a table. We're at this, like, lounge area seated. There's, like, a table over there, BP, ping pong style. They're playing BP. Obviously, how many times we played BP after that? We loved the game. We could have played. We, I don't know why we didn't. But there's a giant projector behind the table okay just to paint the picture this yeah. is like a big room um on the projector screen the events of 9 11 okay are playing and when i say events of 9 11 i mean literally the moments captured of planes flying into the building yeah. okay the jordan brown was that 2018 what year was that Quite some time. Was it like a was... Song, like a music video? What was going no, on? No, there was, was music. Playing on like I don't know. The the project, project. And they had like a big, you know, imaginal wall. You know how you. Uh, yeah. It was bigger than it was usual. Like project, I yeah. I wrote that down. It was a Dude, bigger than it, usual yeah, projector bro, screen. It was literally like the twin towers. Yeah. Were like they were fire. burning. They were yeah, burning like it was live. Like yeah. we were watching yeah. it so as it was happening. Happened. So what, like when they. So no, okay. It was just uncomfortable. I, like, no, but see, I noticed that. Okay, I noticed that was happening, and then I don't know why I felt this. I've never in any like circumstance felt like this, which is why I thought it was odd. But you guys know I pick up on energies very quickly. All of a sudden, I felt like around the room, there was like eyes on me. I didn't think Jordan Brown because I didn't include him in, in me getting fucked up. I just thought like these things only happened to me, at least like, because I, Twin Towers, you think of me. I didn't think of Jordan Brown. Like, you know, he's not Muslim. So I was like, he, he I doesn't know. Yeah, I'm, we got, freak, yeah. I'm freaking out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought everybody's looking at me. I never felt like there's like a dream. Okay. And then I, I think I verbalized to these guys. I said, listen, guys, let's finish our drinks. I'm uncomfortable. I said that. And we, sh and we left. We went to the next place to dance. You know, <laughs> we just having a fun time. You know, I mean, I've um, never met such unwelcoming rich people yes. in public. Yes, exactly. In yes. public. Us being from here, from the Bay Area. Dude, we like, were standing like this 
close in the club with everybody, okay? Yeah. And how can you not be nice at that point? You're sweating on me. Yeah, you know I mean? it was very. Uh, so it was just a point of like energy and vibes. You're like, yeah. okay. I yeah, but do you think at that one point may... I felt eyes? I saw eyes and I felt at, at eyes. One, but on another, do you think that it may have been like you know you connected the dots of A and B and you know just made and that made you start thinking, oh maybe they. Listen, associate I'll, that with me and so then you became hyper vigilant so or do you really like do you think that, that was the, it was them like they no, no, like so they gave you're them. you're right because that's a great question because <coughs> from the time i came to the states okay and to that point there were certain times different things like random things but it's sometimes like specific yeah. scenarios happening uh, where i you know i felt like something was happening because i was not a, i guess a normal person or whatever mm -hmm. and that was Sometimes in Florida, you know, different places, anywhere, Lake fucking Tahoe, it doesn't matter where you are. And now that I'm actually being introspective, because I never thought about it like deeply like this. But right, like I was saying, from me entering the country to that point, different events had happened, maybe, you know, like whatever I learned from them. But that point in time was most definitely the first time, maybe even ever, that I was watching on a big ass screen with a bunch of other people like the events of 9-11. The last time I saw that was fucking on CNN when it was happening, okay? Yeah. Like, that, it was really odd for me that it was even playing. Yeah. And I would, yeah, I would agree to you. I, maybe in that one instant, it, it was a traumatic thing because I definitely did not know how to, you know, cope you with it. didn't feel welcome. I definitely did not feel welcome, you know? Yeah. But, but again, you're absolutely right because I could not give a fuck about them. What could they possibly do, right? Yeah. I could have taken that stance, yeah. but you're right. You're also correct. Uh, and I mean, I gotta back Ollie up on this one because I felt it myself there. Yeah. I just So yeah, I mean, like honestly, um, me as a Christian, um, I just, you know, I don't think it's fair nor right to, uh, you know, like condone someone or wish or like think that, that they're automatically going to hell or judge their or they're gonna be, you know, like condemned on Judgment Day, I uh, agree. just because they have a different religion at the end of the day. If they're a good person, and being a Muslim, they believe in God too. It's the same God. So yeah, I agree. I, I generally think, you know, that's not fair. Yeah. But uh, so, uh, you know, to get back to it, you, uh, so you essentially like canceled him as a friend. Yeah, right. essentially, yeah, I did. Yeah. I'd like be cut ties and let bygones be bygones. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, it's a shame, but you know, that's happening a lot today you know we're seeing it but in kind of a different way um i guess you know you know some people are losing friends but now you know people are getting their life's work you know canceled whether it be on like social media or shows um any type of thing if you know like you know like it, it goes back to maybe when they were young and they might have said something they shouldn't have said uh, or that might have been accepted because it was a different time. Yeah. And all of a sudden, uh, they lose their job, lose um, their show, or yeah. um, just you know, demonized for it. And yeah. Prime example is the, the prime prime minister of Canada, who in like college showed up as blackface. Uh, you know, and like obviously it's not okay for that him to do that, but it was almost like. There's a revolution against him because he did something in college that people have been doing in college for a long like time. They, yeah, so yeah, for a long time, and people even today do the same thing. People are getting their scholarships revoked because of a tweet they made when they were 14 years old. He's not yeah. going to UN meetings in blackface, you know. But, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, I, you know, to be honest, me as a black man, I mean, I think I never even heard of blackface to be honest mm -hmm. I didn't really? even think no, about it's his a, problem I like even saw early it you know in, 90s thing early yeah 90s. like I never even it was never even a big deal to me and I don't know where this stuff is like coming up from you know I know so I think the guy's name you know it was like Jimmy like Kimmel or something like that he did a you know like a segment on his show I don't know I forget what it's called but he did a second show where he literally was in blackface and like People were trying to get him like canceled, yeah. right? And I think it was like Jamie Foxx who like came out and was like, "Yo, like, you guys are tripping." Robert like, Downey chill. Jr. Robert Downey did Downey in Tropic Thunder. Thunder. I, thought, I that, thought the movie was a great movie. I love that movie. I, I didn't hilarious. even know I that was Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. I didn't oh, think... really? You did? I had oh, no dude, idea. I, knew, but I thought he did a great 
job and it was totally acceptable i mean like but i don't drugs. think it like that was, he's not i don't think he's a racist guy he's a drug yeah, addict but he's not a racist yeah, yeah, he, he was a drug addict was, get out of here yeah he made an assumption yeah i'm just kidding uh, no but, he was uh, he, he was, was at the he, betty ford clinic what are you talking yeah, about that's true that's true I mean, anyway we, no, we love robert Downey jr okay <laughs> go iron man I, iron man come talk to us love you three thousand <laughs> shout out um, oh, but yeah, but anyways, so I yeah. just like, do you guys think that um, like cancel um, culture is like racially uh, motivated? So, or, uh, do, like, uh, I mean, I see it kind of, it's going like one way, right? And I mean, yeah. it's kind of what we could call like reverse, like racism in yeah, a way, so right? Or people is... lashing out at... So cancel culture is what? It's like this group shaming, right? Group yeah. like insinuates herd. Right, masses of people, let's say, to an extent, have can we can say that they've been known to be influenced by one thing or another, right? So, like, if they're influenced, like you were saying, Jordan, to cancel someone, you know, wrongfully, let's say, you know, and they cost them so much, um, you know, I think it's, it gets misconstrued over time because group shaming is also means, like, if your friend, even if you don't know what that issue is about, then you also group shame that person. Yeah. Right, so this is, like, a compounded effect, but I think just to cancel someone um, purely because you don't agree with them is is unconstitutional, right? And I think um, without diving, like, too much deeper into that, because I think now is actually our time to close off. We've been speaking for quite some time. But I do think today, uh, you know, I wanted to thank you guys. Today was a great conversation. I do think we did prove, at least today, you know, maybe next week is a different story, but at least today that we proved that it's not just black and white, right? Yeah. Um, yes, sir. Once again, I want to thank you guys for being with us, you know, that's for us being together. I wanted to thank everybody tuning in. And uh, tune in next week for something we got in store. And as always, my name is Ellie Lake, and I'm here with Jordan Brown and Corey Bearclaw. See you soon.